So my, my clinical practice comprises both uh, the treatment of patients with transfusion-dependent anemias uh, and bone marrow transplantation. Um, and I suppose there are two different ways according to that as to how you use uh, Feriscan. So if I start first with the patients who have transfusion-dependent anemias and uh, whether they have uh, sickle cell disease, uh, thalassemia or um, one of the rare inherited bone marrow failure syndromes like uh, Dama and Afghan anemia. Um, I do a fair scan at least on a yearly basis uh, so that I can assess uh, the efficacy of the chelation treatment. If uh, I know, uh, thanks to using the fair scan uh, or because of other um, clinical problems or techniques that the patient is particularly iron loaded, then I might choose to do it uh, more frequently every three or four months in order to assess uh, the efficacy of my treatment and to be able to adjust the chelation treatment. In the transplant setting, we know that uh, iron load um, affects the outcomes and it's particularly important if your bone marrow transplants are for uh, transfusion-dependent anemias, uh, for red cell disorders, in which case uh, you have a risk of serious transplant complications like renal occlusive disease uh, if you go into transplantation with significant iron load and, and organ damage. Uh, so on those patients, um, I do the ferry scan as part of the assessment of the patient. Um, a few months before, uh, I go ahead with the technique uh, of transplantation in order so that uh, there is time uh, to adjust the patient's treatment uh, and achieve the optimal outcome. The age range of using ferry scan becomes very relevant when you're dealing with children. Um, as uh, there are many techniques which may not be suitable to them. However, um, ferris can be in a relatively uh, short technique means that most children will be able to tolerate it if they are adequately supported uh, by play specialists or child life specialists. Um, and in my practice we regularly are able to conduct ferris scans in children who uh, are awake and have not had any form of sedation uh, down to uh, four or five years of age. Having a technique that is standardized and validated means that you have an accurate result uh, no matter whether uh, the patient is having at different time points uh, the measurement done in different machines, in different places, or even when the uh, technique is being used in the same hospital, even by the same technicians, just because there is a time span between two measurements, there's going to be different forms of drifts, uh, but which in this case uh, uh, are uh, accounted uh, when you are giving an analysis. And that means that you can uh, generally trust uh, the value that you've been provided. Now this is very important in clinical practice uh, because if you are relying on uh, the alternative methods of using um, which are used for the, for the measurement of iron, like for example doing a regular ferritin uh, blood test or using the MRI t to start technique, you very quickly uh, notice that are not uh, reliable in knowing exactly uh, what is the position with your patient and hence uh, those techniques are used uh, uh, in a way that you can see trends in, in your patient so you can see whether the iron load is increasing or reducing but with Feriscan you have the certainty that the actual value that you've been provided uh, actually is the truth in the tissue iron load of that patient. MRI scanners are like very complicated digital cameras and just in the same way as you can adjust, let's say, the aperture and shutter speed or film speed in a normal digital camera, on an MRI scanner, there are hundreds of parameters you can change. And just like your ordinary camera, if you change these parameters, you change the intensity of the picture or the contrast, it's the same for the MRI scanner. So the challenge is how can we make sure that different makes and models of scanner in different centers are all collecting the data in the same way. And a similar challenge goes for the way those data are then subsequently analyzed to produce the liver iron concentration. There are several different methods of analyzing the data and we need to make sure that we standardize a method in order to get a reproducible result. Given these challenges, any particular technique needs to be validated. And what we mean by that is that the calibration that relates the MRI measured parameter, which might be something like T2 star or R2 or various other parameters, 
we need to make sure that the calibration that relates that measurement to liver iron concentration is reproducible. In other words, if we calibrate a certain scanner with a certain technique of data acquisition and data analysis, we need to make sure that if we transfer that to another scanner, that the same calibration is valid. If it's not valid, then we get a bias in our results. So validation requires testing the technique in independent cohorts of subjects on different scanners from the original scanners and patients where the calibration was made. It turns out that very few techniques have been through this process. Um, many that have, have failed that test because it's so easy for calibrations to drift. Um, but I'm pleased to say that Feriscan is a particular technique that has passed that test and has been validated on multiple makes and models of scanner and in different cohorts of patients. Some of the key advantages of using Feriscan for liver iron concentration measurement are that it is standardised across all centres, ensuring that the results that are produced can be compared between centres and also can be used against uh, thresholds mentioned in clinical guidelines. The technique is also regulated by authorities such as the FDA in the United States, CE Mark in Europe and TGA in Australia and so on. It also has a very large dynamic range which means that measurements can be made across all liver iron concentrations encountered in clinical practice. There's no upper limit that cannot be reached unlike uh, some other techniques. And finally, it can also be used in a range of patients, uh, for example, in, including very young children or frail patients that may have difficulty in holding their breath, which is required for many MRI techniques. With Feriscan, the patient is able to breathe freely uh, during the data acquisition. So those are some of the advantages of using the Feriscan technique. It is important to remember that Feriscan is a technique that is very well tolerated by patients, can be conducted even in very young children with sedation if necessary, and that the results that you're going to obtain are very accurate and reproducible, and hence you can trust them to guide uh, the treatment of your patients and know that the health outcomes are going to uh, be optimal if you target your treatment accurately. Thank you.